Welcome to the Red Stem Orchard YouTube channel. And for once, I'm actually standing in an orchard. Uh, it's mid-February, it's pruning season. So yeah, I'm gonna give you a quick tour and then uh, we'll get into some fundamentals of why we do and what we're doing. And then uh, probably do a follow-up video on uh, pruning and our pruning technique and what you should and shouldn't do. That's relative. There really is no right or wrong, so. Well, yeah, we're not going to get into that now. Let's take a tour. All right, so we're standing at the top corner. I'm going to show you, spin the camera around. Looking down the hill, there's all our semi-dwarf apple trees. Hopefully they show up. We have a line of dwarf apple trees. And then I have trellis blackberries. This variety here, triple crown thornless. When I got that in May of last year, it was the plant was like this tall. It looked like it was about dead. So yeah, it grows super fast. You got Chester thornless. Same thing, little bitty plant, got it in May. And you can see this is a, uh, this trellis is five foot. It's supposed to be five foot, so. Kiowa, and that is a thorny variety. They get super huge. You may have heard of those. This is trained on a trellis. Let me tell you something. These thorns right here, no joke. Way, way sharper than the uh, wild varieties. Mm, excuse me. We got two varieties. We got Arapaho. This is a thornless variety. And then we got Wakita. Wachita, Wakita, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. So yeah. That's our blackberry varieties. Let's take uh, a look at our dwarf apple trees. First one up, black twig. Notice how tiny it is. That is on a dwarfing rootstock. Bud 9, Budgowski 9. It also gets shaded some, so it is a tad smaller than it should be. Next one up, old fashioned wine sap. Eh, it's six foot tall. It is running out. Plenty of fruit buds. But uh, yeah, we let them bear early and it runned them out. So that is something to be aware of if you do plant dwarf trees. This one right here, Aunt Rachel. This stands about mm, six foot tall. It is loaded. I mean, loaded with fruit buds. This tree will never carry all this fruit, it will have to be thinned. Arkansas black. It's about six and a half foot tall. More of a central leader type. Uh, yeah, this started out as a tall spindle setup and it never quite worked the way we wanted to. We had too many trees die out. It's actually a way higher density than what it's planted now, so. But yeah. Next up, black limber twig. This tree is in bad shape. We left it just to see if it's gonna survive. Didn't even prune it. It's got a lot of cicada damage. You look under here, you see this right here? That severely weakens the branch. You see that right there? Hardly any green. Yeah, so we just left it to see if it's gonna survive. Probably gonna end up cutting it out. There used to be three more trees in here, but they died out. He got a serious vole problem up here and didn't realize that at the time we planted these. So, uh, got Grimes Golden right here. Grimes Golden, spot number nine. It is loaded with fruit buds and it blooms out like crazy. About a little over six foot tall. Yeah. That concludes the dwarfs. Let's go to the semi dwarfs. First up, Beaven's favorite. This is on an MM111 EMLA. That's the root stock, semi dwarf root stock. Um, we're training it to a open center style just to keep the height under control. Uh, central leader tree this thing will be way taller than what it is it's a four-year-old tree fixing to go in its fifth leaf so yeah it's a good looking tree it also produces really good looking fruit like really good looking fruit next up mary reed all these rootstocks in here i'm talking about are all going to be on mm111 all the larger trees so that way i don't have to keep repeating it uh the variety mary reed as you can see we got a lot of shoot growth 
and that's from heavy pruning from cicada damage like you've seen on the other tree and I want to prune all that out because it's weak and as soon as it bears an apple it's going to snap the branch so cut all that out it induced vigorous growth which is what happens when you cut a tree back real hard in the winter time so yeah but we'll get into that when we prune next up gala gala from down under it's from the other side of the world yep great variety um does have a little bit of disease issues but overall good tasting apple uh, one of the few apples we actually got off last year because the uh believe it or not squirrels decimated our trees so yes squirrels will mess up your trees they will chew the branches off just randomly chew branches <laughs> So I did my part to reduce the population, legally, in hunting season. Next up, another gala. You see the shoot growth, that's going to be cut way back. Uh, I'm actually going to probably collect cyan wood out of this and propagate this, because I do like this tree. Next up, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, it's either Mutsu or Mutsu. And this right here actually produces a large greenish apple with a red blush if it's getting enough sun. Uh, pretty good taste in apple uh, it did show good disease resistance here in our area so that is a good sign next up Ashmead's kernel yep this is an old variety it's supposed to be highly flavored didn't get no apples on it last year but we do have fruit buds and fruit spurs so we should get fruit off it this year and this tree is only three years old If the wind's causing problem, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's always windy up here, which is good for disease and, and stuff, but not good if you want to film. All right, we got Rome Beauty. And check this out. This is supposed to be a Rome Beauty. Okay, notice the more vertical growth, more upright growth. This is supposed to be a Rome Beauty. Notice the difference in growth, the bark color. And this is supposed to be a Rome Beauty. Notice how it's more vertical growth. And it matches the one on down there, the more vertical growth. Guess what that means? It means they're two different trees. It means that this one isn't a Rome Beauty or the other two aren't a Rome Beauty. Not sure which. Um, they both develop red apples, but they both have different growth habits, so they are not the same tree. So, and this thing right here, got all kinds of problems with fire blight it is super susceptible to fire blight so not my choice it was mom's choice that was her favorite childhood apple so that's why i got planted if i had it my choice i'd cut them off the ground and start over i had to cut out so much fire blight last year with pruning just to try to save the tree it is awful all right next up wolf river that's three-year-old tree it's growing pretty well i did get heavily pruned last winter because of a uh, cicada damage these apples right here get ginormous and i mean ginormous huge one of the largest apples all right we got here yes this is to weight the branches down to get them more to 45 to make them more fruitful and drop the vigor down training method also spreaders you'll see that in some videos on youtube people using spreaders this technique to get the branches at a more laid over angle so as you don't get bark inclusion in your branch as it gets bigger and older and makes it weak and the branch snaps off you don't want that so this hasn't been pruned yet none of these have been pruned this whole row well let me take that back these five are pink lady and we did get some off them last year before the squirrels decimated them some bird damage, but mostly squirrels. This stuff right here does not work. Don't waste your money. People swear by it, didn't work for us. So in my experience, I won't be buying it again. Okay, this one right here is called Red Rebel. It's supposed to be a disease resistant variety and I can say it did not get any fire blight or any disease last year. It did, however, have a little dieback because we had a tad bit of shoot growth and then we had a really cold big cold snap 
and it killed the tips of the branches. So, summer banana. And as you guessed it, it's supposed to taste like banana in the summer. We got Kids Orange Red, which is a offspring of Cox's Orange Pippin. This one actually produced really nice looking apples, but again, squirrels got them. I'm not gonna let that happen again this year. We did have dieback, we had a late shoot tip. Um, we had a lot of dry weather last summer. I mean, like a whole month, I think August, there was zero rain. And then it came in like a gangbusters and flooded with rain. And then what that did is spurred a lot of late season growth. And that's what you see what happens. These were still growing and then they had a super hard cold snap, killed the tips of all the branches. So most of all that will have to be pruned back, pruned off. So die back. Next up, mm. Grimes Golden. No, I'm sorry. This is Golden Smoothie. Golden Smoothie. I believe that's a sport off of a, another tree. Mutated, mutated bud. King David, King David. This one right here produced some really nice looking apples too. Uh, just a few of them this year. It's got way more fruit buds, fruit spurs. Definitely gonna have to have some prunings. You can see there's stuff going everywhere, crisscrossing and everything. I did a little summer pruning, but didn't cut out a whole lot. Just stuff I knew for sure was not gonna be here next year just so I wouldn't spur growth in the winter time by pruning even more. Another golden smoothie. Somehow we ended up with two. I don't remember how that happened, but we did. So yeah. As you can see, this one is smaller than a lot of these other ones because the further we get over towards the fence, the more shading we get. These trees right here in the summertime, the sun sets through over here and it shades horribly this side of the orchard. So we gotta cut these trees out. And What do we got here? Gold Rush. We got Gold Rush. And this is on the same rootstock as all these other trees. However, it's got a lot of damage down here. A lot of damage. When you put on your guards around your tree, don't leave them on too long because you got to monitor and make sure that you don't have boring insects and stuff. So yeah, this tree is probably going to be dead. I'm willing to bet it's like 80% girdled. So yeah, it did fruit out last year, but it didn't produce any fruit because obviously it was under strain. But what I do have here is a good shoot. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to graft that. Good sprout off the end right there with no fruit buds. Perfect for grafting. I'm going to graft a few more. Get these trees cut out. Yeah. This little fella, Yates. Yates is not a vigorous grower. I have another Yates tree down by the shop. Um, we're going to turn that into a Franken tree. Yeah. If you don't know what a Franken tree is, go check out Stephen at home at skillcult.com. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, he inspired me a lot. I watched his videos for a long, long time. Um, yeah, great guy. Does his own home breeding and stuff. Pretty cool, but uh, got some techniques from him. His little Franken tree, he has like 100 gajillion. Is that a word? I'm going to call it a word. 100 gajillion varieties on one tree. So uh, that's what we plan on doing. Although we shouldn't have chose Yates. We should have probably chose something like Liberty, which is disease resistant as the main. And then take all your branches as they sprout and craft on your other varieties. Then you basically have a fruit cocktail tree. I'll be at apples. All right, this right here is Terry Winter. This actually originated here in Georgia, somewhere down south of Atlanta, I believe. Um, it does produce a lot of apples. They are super red, very pretty tree. Oh yeah, by the way, you can see the squirrels. We had netted some apples and the squirrels went, you know what, and broke my branch. So this is going to be repaired, yep. I used to love squirrels, but I don't anymore. Virginia Gold. 
yeah so another gold variety hence the name Virginia gold um, I do have a shoot here that I can propagate which I'm probably gonna do because you see this nasty damage right here yep something got to gnaw on and it it's rough I could lop this off here and maybe get an advantageous bud pop out don't know and what sucks is I got a lot of you see all these little fruit spurs <laughs> of course I got a lot of fruit spurs and I don't like squirrels. This sad thing right here is a rootstock. Mom was trying to save it. Um, it was a tree, and I think Dad knocked it and broke it, broke the top off. Um, doing what Dad does. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. So that's all the apple trees. I do have two raised beds. I got more beds coming. Uh, I got the materials to build them. I just gotta build them. I'm actually gonna be planning and making stooling beds. And if you don't know what that is, I'll explain that in another video. And I'm actually gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. Um, Cause there's not a whole, whole lot of information on the internet, modern information on stooling beds. You can see pictures of places and how they do it. But basically it's the way you propagate apple root stalks and also pear root stalks. Um, a few other fruit varieties that will readily sprout when you coppice them. Um, also, we got rabbit eye blueberries. And no, I didn't take the tag off yet. Tiff Blue. You see, these things right here are already pushing buds. It is way too early for that. That is powder blue. They do actually have metal tags on them too, but I left those. They're not hurting anything and they're weather resistant, so I figured what the heck, I'll leave them on there. Brightwell Blueberry. These are all rabbit eyes because as they ripen, they look like rabbit eyes, supposedly. Climax. And these last two are the same variety. Premier. So yeah, that's our blueberry varieties. I uh, planted them last year. They were heavily pot bound. Let me give you a piece of advice real quick. If you buy fruit from a store and it's a potted plant, nursery store, anything like that, roll the uh lay the plant around the side roll the um bucket try to mash it up a little bit and pull it out and look and see if it's root bound if it's like heavily root bound don't buy it there's things you can do to try to save it and try to help it i actually put these in a planter last year right had them in a planter all most of the summer half the summer and they weren't doing anything and it didn't dawn on me that they were heavily root bound and i pulled the root stalks back out Wait until like a real overcast week. Pull the blueberries back out and guess what? None of the roots had sprouted out anywhere. They were still growing in a circle because they're root bound. So, in last ditch effort, I took a knife and sliced through all the roots, mashed them up, broke them up. Uh, I did put in hormone treatment on this, which we try to stay organic in here, but there are conventional ways. There are other ways to do it. Some I don't agree with because some of the chemicals, if you study them and actually read the the labels on it some really nasty stuff that people are eating and they have no idea. <laughs> I'm not putting that crap on there. But I did put some rooting hormone on here to try to say, hey look, there's Pop. Say hey. hey. There you go. Yeah, we did put a little hor uh, root hormone treatment on here as a last ditch effort to save it, but I don't use that kind of stuff for, as a normal use. That was like a, uh, I had an investment, I'm trying to save it. Um, yeah, outside of that, we do not use synthetic inputs whatsoever, so. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, all that good jazz. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. I don't give a crap. Uh, leave a comment. If you have questions, things you want to see out of this orchard, let me know. I will be glad to film it because this is what I love. I do build and I do other kinds of things, but this is my forte. This is what I've studied significantly on. I'm talking about reading mountains and mountains of literature and trial and error. So um, yeah, check out my other videos. Stay tuned. Next video coming up, we're going to show you what to prune, why to prune, how to prune, all that good stuff. See ya.